First of all, about the ammonia pathway from intestinal lumen to the blood. There are three compartments, small intestine, large intestine and blood, and there are several processes in the gut that result in the production of ammonia molecules. In small intestine, there is protein digestion by pancreatic enzymes. In large intestine, it's amino acid deamination by gut bacteria and urea degradation by urea producing bacteria. All of these processes result in ammonia production. To explain amino acid deamination, let's take glutamate molecule. The nitrogen group of glutamate molecule can be removed by oxidative deamination. Oxidative deamination catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase that use NAD molecule as coenzyme, and oxidation of glutamate results in formation of alpha catagglutarate and ammonia molecule. Also, in intestinal lumen, some colonic bacteria produce enzymes that is called ureas, and this enzyme cause urea degradation to two ammonia molecules and carbon dioxide. And these ammonia molecules can freely cross biological membranes, so they diffuse through intestinal line into the blood. Unless ammonia molecule capture a hydrogen proton and becomes ammonium, which is the ionized form of the molecule that is unable to cross biological membranes. So basically, will ammonia molecule cross intestinal lining or not depends on quantity of available hydrogen protons. And to prevent the production and absorption of ammonia molecules, lactulose prescribed. Lactulose is synthetic disaccharide made up of galactose and fructose, and the most important feature of lactulose is that intestine don't have any enzyme to split lactulose, so it's non-absorbable sugar. And because lactulose cannot be degraded in small intestine, it reach large intestine unchanged. But colonic bacteria have an enzyme to split lactulose, and lactulose metabolized by colonic bacteria at first to monosaccharides and then to a short chain fatty acids, hydrogen and methane. And these products of lactulose degradation cause decrease in ammonia absorption and ammonia production. So again, the products of lactulose degradation are short chain fatty acids, hydrogen and methane. And this increase in hydrogen and methane results in increase in intraluminal gas production. Also, increase in short-chain fatty acids cause increase in intraluminal osmolarity. These two effects combine accelerate food transition through intestine, and if transition became faster, the transition time decrease. But the more specific effects of lactulose are related to changes in intraluminal pH. These short-chain fatty acids are mostly lactic acid and acetic acid. And these acids partially dissociate. Lactic acid dissociate to lactatine and hydrogen proton, and acetic acid to acetatine and also hydrogen proton. So there is substantial increase in hydrogen protons production. And these hydrogen protons cause decrease in intraluminal pH, so intraluminal pH becomes more acidic. And we know that ammonia molecule can freely diffuse across membranes, but when ammonia capture hydrogen proton, it becomes ammonium that is unable to cross biological membranes. So the molecule is trapped in intestinal lumen. So the conversion of ammonia to ammonium, or we can say the ammonia ionization, is determined by intraluminal pH. Because the ammonia is a weak base, the more acidic is the environment, or the higher is the amount of available hydrogen protons, the more ammonia molecules are converted into ammonium molecules. And we see that lactulose degradation results in an increase in the production of hydrogen protons that create acidic pH, and this stimulates conversion of dangerous ammonia molecules to trapped ammonium molecules. So hydrogen and methane production cause increase in intraluminal gas formation, and short-chain fatty acids increase intraluminal osmolarity. This results in the reduction of transition time through intestine, and if transition time became faster, the time of ammonia presence in intestine reduce, so ammonia absorption reduce, so blood ammonia level decrease. As we see, the first effect of lactulose is related to decrease in absorption. The ionization of short-chain fatty acids leads to decrease in intraluminal pH with increase in hydrogen protons. And if the amount of available hydrogen protons increase, the conversion of ammonia to ammonium increase. This causes increase in trapped ammonium molecules and decrease in dangerous ammonia molecules. So ammonia absorption decrease and this causes decrease in blood ammonia level. So second effect of lactulose is also related to decrease in ammonia absorption. These trapped ammonium molecules are used by colonic bacteria as a nitrogen source of protein synthesis. Also, we already mentioned that in intestinal lumen there is colonic bacteria that degrade urea by urea secretion, and degradation of one urea molecule results in the production of two ammonium molecules, 
so urea is producing bacteria as a substantial source of ammonia production. But this urea is producing bacteria have a serious weakness. They cannot tolerate acidic environment. And lactulose acidify intestinal interluminal pH, so by decrease in gut pH, lactulose destroy urea's producing bacteria, thereby reducing production of ammonia. So the third effect of lactulose is related to decrease in ammonia production. So to summarize, lactulose effects are based on decrease in intestinal production of ammonia by destroying urease producing bacteria, and also by decrease in ammonia absorption by trapping ammonia molecules inside the intestine, and also by speeding up the transition time through intestine.